We're piecing together the iPhone 11, Tim Cook is all over the place, and the iOS 13 leaks that could hold clues to future hardware. Let's get right to the core of this week's Apple News and Rumors. Just when we thought we knew everything there was to know about the iPhone 11, we get hit with even more rumors. Longtime Apple analyst Ming Chi Kuo has been on somewhat of a rumor roll recently, and this time he released a note published in 9to5Mac claiming that the 2019 iPhones will be getting new antennas. This because of a change in the antennas and in the suppliers that Apple uses. Now, the change would ultimately translate into production improvements and lower the costs for Apple. However, us users might get some benefits as well with performance updates, particularly when it comes to indoor navigation. So it sounds like a win-win. Now, the other rumor that's been making the rounds on 9to5Mac and BGR has to do with the design. Now, we've all seen the renders at this point of that not-so-attractive square camera module on the back of both the iPhone 11 and the 11R, but at least now it might be getting a little bit more tolerable because it apparently will match the color of the back of the phone, so it'll help it blend in a little bit more. You can get a sense of what this would look like with these renders by Hassan Kaimak. Apple's developers conference is still weeks away at this point, but we're already getting a pretty clear picture of what to expect. This year, WWDC will take place on June 3rd through the 7th at the McHenry Convention Center in San Jose, just like last year, where Apple will give us a glimpse of its new operating systems. iOS 13, Mac OS 10.15, and Watch OS 6. This we know for sure, but we think we know more. This week, Bloomberg published a massive report detailing each of these updates according to people familiar with the plans. Now, obviously, we can't know for sure if these are true, and we won't until June 3rd, but I'm gonna run you through some of the highlights. First up, iOS 13. Apple's mobile operating system is said to be getting some important interface changes this time around, one of which could include a brand new home screen. So you'll be getting a brand new looking phone right off the bat. And it's very likely we'll be getting a dark mode for iOS, similar to what Mojave brought to the Macs last year and what Google just announced for its own OS, Android Q. Now, along with dark mode, Bloomberg says we can expect sleep mode, a kind of hybrid between the do not disturb and dark mode, that includes a better bedtime feature on the clock app, essentially made to help users get better rest at night. Now, this is the first trend I wanna point out. Expect Apple to continue making a push for digital well being with its new updates. iOS 13 is also said to include a few more controls for parents to limit screen time for kids and be able to control who they interact with. This after the company recently removed or imposed restrictions on third party screen time and parental control apps in the App Store. And this brings me to the second trend. We're going to see Apple start to beef up its own native apps and start making more to keep you users from looking elsewhere. The Maps, Mail, Reminder, and Messages apps are all said to be getting significant refreshes with iOS 13. And Apple could add a few more by breaking out music, TV shows, and podcasts into standalone apps. Now, the other app rumored to be getting a massive and much needed overhaul is the Health app. Apple will apparently streamline all your information into the homepage, giving it a new design and outlining your daily activity, along with adding some new health tracking features like hearing health, which would look at how loudly you play your music and the volume of the ambient noise that you're exposed to. Also, period tracking, which would obviously keep tabs on the women's menstrual cycle. Now, this is the third trend I wanted to point out. Apple has been pushing health features for a while now, but we're gonna see some major updates which could clue us in to hardware that they may have in store for us later this year if you pay attention. The focus on hearing health could hint at AirPods 3 getting some biometric sensors, while the focus on sleep health would mean we finally see sleep tracking on the Apple Watch Series 5. This in turn would have to mean better battery life, which was the biggest hurdle holding it back from native sleep tracking in previous models. Right now, the Series 4 maxed out at about 18 hours. 
Which brings us to watchOS 6, which would apparently free the watch even more from the iPhone. The update is said to be bringing an app store to the watch, instead of having to rely to the phone to load new apps on the watch. It's also finally getting a voice memo app along with two new native apps called Cycle and Dose. Cycle, as the name suggests, would be the standalone app for that period tracking feature that I mentioned on the Health app, and it's a feature that Fitbit and Garmin already offer on their watches, so it's not too much of a surprise. And then the other one is called Dose, and this one would help people remember to take their meds. Now on the iPad front, iOS 13 could bring better multitasking features, home screen tweaks, and the ability to turn your iPad into a second monitor, complete with mouse support. And now on to Mac OS. The most recent update could bring iOS apps to the Mac. The project codenamed Marzipan, which has been in the works since at least 2017, is apparently already available for developers and will debut for users with Mac OS 10.15. And last but not least, hardware. We're also on the lookout for an 8K display at WWDC to launch alongside, and this is a big maybe, so don't take my word for it, that modular Mac Pro, which Tim Cook promised for some time in 2019. Needless to say, it is shaping up to be a busy developers conference, so stay tuned. Tim Cook has been busy making the meteor rounds as of late, revealing tidbits of Apple's plans for world domination. Not quite. Last week, he was interviewed by Diane Sawyer on ABC News, to whom he spoke to about Apple's commitment to privacy and digital well-being, which further supports the OS updates we talked about before. Then this week, he spoke to CNBC about how Apple has been quietly but quickly building up its portfolio of acquisitions. Some of the more publicized acquisitions in years past have been Beats and the magazine app Texture. But in the past six months alone, they've acquired between 20 and 25 companies, up from 18 a year ago. That's one every two to three weeks, which got me thinking. What would you guys like to see Apple buy next? Now consider this, Apple has roughly $225 billion in cash and investments to spend. So that rules out Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Disney. But aside from those, Sky's pretty much the limit. Leave your top picks on the comments below. Tweet me, Instagram me, smoke signal me, whatever it is that you want to do, because I'll be reading some of your comments in next week's episode along with my own picks. That's it for our show this week, but you can stay up to date with all the latest iPhone 11 and iOS 13 leaks on CNET.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe this video for more Apple Core. I'll see you next week.